there's a major debate going on here at Davos about technological disruption. Everybody expects it to happen. Everybody, I think, expects it to be essentially beneficial. But in the meantime, in the transition from, through this technological revolution, rather like the industrial revolution, they're going to be, there's going to be pain and there are going to be job losses. And Eric Schmidt on Thursday, the uh, executive chairman of Google, talked about how there would be uh, major job losses as a result of automation spreading into some of the uh, middle management and, uh, and white collar areas that possibly have felt themselves to be immune. What's emerging as well is policy advisors, policy makers, academics, economists and some of the technology, te some technology side talking about how government is not going to catch up quickly enough to cover some of the pain, to ease some of the pain. Larry Summers was at a briefing this morning organised by Microsoft in which he said that uh, the, the great leaders who helped the Industrial Revolution uh, into its uh, maturity, Bismarck, Gladstone, Teddy Roosevelt, those are the people he cited, just don't exist now to help with this technological change. So there's a huge debate about policy, there's a huge debate about the economic implications. Does it actually mean that jobs will be lost or will entrepreneurial companies pick up the slack? Uh, and that's causing an, an enormous amount of heat uh, in, a, in a Davos where actually technology has, has largely dominated a lot of the debate. What I think is that the technology is going to obviously change lives. It is, a lot of it is going to be beneficial, but I think there is a lot of big talk here, as often there is at the World Economic Forum, about what's going to happen with technology that may be overstated. And I do think that the risks risk being understated because of the way in which people see it through their own use of tablets, of smartphones, and of the connected world, which is omnipresent here in Davos. Andrew Hill, Financial Times, Davos.